All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the webinar. Today we are going to be talking about higher time frame analysis, uh, taking partial profits, and also trusting the trades that you take. So uh, I'm going to go over those few things real quick at the beginning of the webinar, and then I'll open it up for Q and A, and you guys can ask any questions, uh, and then I'll answer them. So. Uh, in terms of higher time frame analysis, so whenever you're doing your breakdown of the charts or anything like that, I notice a lot of people out there get caught up on lower time frames. So they'll be marking up their charts on 15 minute or an hourly time frame. And that's good, but you have to start with a higher time frame analysis first. And the reason that you're doing that is because the big institutions and the big funds are operating off of higher time frames as well so by you operating and basing your trades off of a higher time frame you're able to get a clearer picture of what the bigger funds and bigger institutions are doing in their trading and the whole goal is to basically capitalize on the movement you know of the trade that they're taking because we're in all reality we're not the ones who move the market they are so for example this big push down here you know they were obviously selling somewheres in here and you know we've seen that in price action by seeing this big sell off so we use that to our advantage by seeing you know these big down moves on this day you know we would look for a trade setup or whatever the case may be but we're able to capitalize on these big moves by understanding price action and technical analysis and you know we're able to basically capitalize on the same moves that they're able to capitalize on so we're not just looking for you know 20 to 30 pips uh we're able to capitalize on bigger opportunities by using a higher time frame and by using a higher time frame you can capitalize on swing trades intraday trades day trades scalps all that so you just have to get a better understanding of what you're looking for and that's honestly where most people are struggling is they don't really know what they're looking for in the charts and they just sit down and they kind of just, they're, they're looking to buy it or sell it. They don't know if it's a good time to trade, but they don't know what needs to be there for them to know whether it's a good or bad time to trade. So, you know, these are all things that you're going to learn over time, but you'll never learn them if you're not actively spending the time in the markets studying. You know, it's not just about watching videos or anything like that. You actually have to be studying as well. So that means going through your charts, doing what I'm about to show you. Make sure that you, you know, back test, look for trades. Where would you have entered? Where would you have exited? All of that. So for today's example, I'm going to use uh, Australian dollar, so AUD USD. And there's no real specific reason that I'm using this pair. Um, this is just the one that I selected for today's teaching, but. Uh, you know, this isn't like a, a pair that, you know, is my favorite or that I'm watching or that I trade every day or anything like that. It's just the pair that I'm picking uh, today to teach with. So for me, I typically like to day trade. I don't really like to stay in a trade more than like max, usually two to three days. Uh, and that's just because I don't have a lot of patience. And honestly, if I have a trade open, I just... I tend to like I want to I want to look at the markets more. So if I don't have a trade open, uh, I'm just a little bit more relaxed, I guess. You know, not that I'm like super nervous when I trades, and obviously I know it's either going to go in my direction or it's not going to go in my direction. But I don't know. It's just something about like holding trades for a longer period of time. It's just not really my thing. I don't I don't like to do that. Uh, I find myself always closing out just a little bit early because I don't feel like sitting through all that. So for me, I like to stick to a daily time frame, And that's pretty much all I really analyze from. I do use the monthly and the weekly at the start of like a new week or a new month. But typically, I'm just operating from the daily and I'm looking for daily levels uh, that the market would be targeting for me to execute a trade off of. So let's actually go in and see how I do my higher time frame analysis as well as you know the things that I'd be looking for so I'm gonna clear everything off this chart real quick and the first thing I do is I go through and I mark up all my support and resistance levels 
nearest to the current price. So right now we're trading at 75.40. So I'm gonna mark up my levels or you know support and resistance levels that the market would logically want to trade to uh, that are near here. So I don't need to go and you know mark this out way back up here at uh, 81.50. I can as the market starts pushing higher. But for me, I'm just really going to stay within where the market's trading. So for, for me, honestly, that'd be uh, with this pair here. Let me get my little square. It would be from here, this ICT bear shoulder block. So let me just mark out what I'm actually talking about here. So I would be marking out all my support and resistance levels from that high to this low. And the whole reason that I'm marking my support and resistance levels between the this high and this low is because this is what this is where we're at currently. We're at 7540. Uh, the nearest low on a daily time frame is here, and the nearest high on a daily time frame is here. So with that being said, I'm expecting price either to trade back up here, find resistance, sell off, consolidate within here, break this low and continue lower. It just gives me a lot more to work with by starting uh, from a more narrow perspective, really. I'm just kind of breaking down a more focused view on the market, right? So I'm not going through and I'm not you know, saying, okay, all these candles are touching, these candles are touching, this is a level of resistance. Okay, this high is touching, this high is touching support. All right, like, I don't do any of that. So I, I like to keep my charts clean and I like to just know what I'm looking at and, you know, what, what I'm approaching uh, in terms of price. So, you know, whether that be 76, and 76 is this high here, you know, whatever I'm approaching, uh, I have that marked out on my chart. So I know what, what I'm actually to expect from, from the levels that I have, because all the levels that you mark up, you'll eventually realize they, the levels are ideas. So the levels are an idea of what you think in the market, but you'll never have ideas for the things that you, you know, are, are looking to expect out of your trading or just out of a trade in general. You'll never have those ideas unless you're actually actively spending time in the markets. And if you work a job, that's fine. You can still, you know, look at the markets uh, whenever you're off of work. You can just go and back test. You don't have to do like live market action. The point is you just need to see these levels get traded to and how the market reacts based off of that. By you seeing that, you'll start to understand the levels that you're marking up and then the reason behind them because you're not just marking up support and resistance levels like for no reason. We know that it's gonna go there, but we also have to know how do we act and how do we react once the market trades to those levels. And that's one of the most important things. Most people don't know how to react when the market trades to those levels. Uh, so hopefully I can give you some better insight on that today. Um, so I mark out the current swing that I'm in, this is it. And then I'm gonna mark out all my, uh, closest support and resistance levels. So I know that we have a resistance level here. And why is this a resistance level? Because it's an ICT bearish order block. If you don't know what an ICT bearish order block is, it's just simply a down, it's an up candle. Once a down candle breaks that up candle. So let me switch to my cursor here. So you can see we've got a down candle here, but before that down candle, we have this up candle. Whenever these funds or institutions are buying or selling the market, they can't sell as the market's moving down, right? So as the market is pushing up, they're selling it. So the market's pushing up, they're selling. Market's pushing up, they're selling. They're adding positions as the market's pushing up into resistance levels. So we can see evidence of sellers being in the marketplace in, in form of a ICT bearish order block, which is all all it is is just an up candle before a down candle closes beneath that up candle that then validates this candle as an ICT bearish order block. And the same goes for um, ICT bullish order block. It's just the opposite. It's a down candle or a series of down candles before being broken by a series or one up candle uh, in order to confirm it. 
So as this candle traded above these two down candles, that confirmed these two down candles as an ICT bullish order block. Uh, any trade back into that should act as resistance. And we didn't see that happen, right? We traded right through it. So uh, that's what happens whenever you're in a bearish market, right? That's why you have to look at your structure as well. You're forming lower lows, lower highs. Uh, you shouldn't necessarily be looking for a buy just based off the fact that an ICT bullish shoulder block form. You have to also be in sync with the marketplace, right? So not only are you just marking out your support and resistance levels within the swing, but you also need to understand what is the structure of the market that you're trading, right? So for AUD USD, we know that we're in a downtrend. And the reason that we know that we're in a downtrend is not because of any moving average or anything like that. It's real simple, guys. It's just the market is making higher lows and lower lows. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, lower highs and lower lows. All right, so I don't need to mark out every one, but you can see we got a high, a low, then we've got a lower high, and then we got a lower low. Then we got a lower high, then we've got a lower low or really this lower low, then we've got a lower high, then we've got a lower low, right? So we know we're in a bearish market. Up until we get to, you know, once we broke this low here, we know that we're in a bearish market still. So any, if we're trading here, right, you know, say this is current price action, 77.15, we're gonna mark out current support and resistance levels from uh, the current swing that we're within. So that would be, Why is it not staying, all right? That would be this portion of price action, this swing, this lower high to this lower low, all right? So as the market's pushing up, you're gonna, we already know that we're in a bearish market, right? So you're gonna mark out all your support and resistance levels. All right, so see right here, we got a high. All right, you got a high right here, took that high out, another high right here, took that high out. So what do you have that's right here? An ICT bearish shoulder block. All right, the market never traded up into this ICT bearish shoulder block. So how would we have traded this? Well, we would have had to go to a lower time frame um, in order to get a clearer view of these wicks in here so we can break that down but we know that we're in a bearish bearish structure right so you break down the swing that you're in and then you mark up all the support and resistance levels this is resistance this is resistance right this up candle up here is resistance so it acted as resistance right it did break up above it for a few days and held here, but once it broke back through, it didn't waste any time to go lower, right? So we would have had to break this little portion of price action down to figure out, you know, where would we have sold it here? So I'm gonna delete all this stuff just so when we go on a lower time frame, we know what we're looking at. All right, so we know we've got our bearish. This is the swing that we're working within right here, this gray box. And then up here is the bearish shoulder block that never got hit, so we don't need that. And then right here. So the reason I'm marking out this high and this high is because if we're looking at price as it's right here, uh, the current resistance levels will be here, here, and here. So we need to see what the market does once it gets to those levels. All right, we trade to it, we're holding it, trade above it, but we close you know, right back within it. All right, all right, here. Broke through it here, this becomes a daily ICT bearish order block, okay? You could have probably found an entry, you know, on these wicks somewhere on a lower time frame. Let's just actually see uh, if we would have found that. All right, so, there's my, all right. So, uh, See, the thing is, it takes time for you guys to see this, but you wouldn't see it if you're just brand new to trading. But uh, there's something called a turtle soup pattern, and it's something that ICT teaches, and it's just a stop run. Um, 
sorry, let me change this. It's just a stop run on a lower high. So here you got a high and then we did a stop run and then we pushed lower. So you wouldn't have known to short it here unless you know, you know what this looks like in, in chart form. So for me personally though, I wouldn't have even sold it here. I usually wait for the, for the breakdown and for the retest. You see, once we broke down here though, we never got a retest, so I would have never shorted it yet. The part where I would have shorted this would have been here. So the market pushed lower, but it was trading higher into this. All right, and again, you, that's why you have to just make sure that you're looking at the charts often because you won't be able to see things like this. So we did miss the entry here. Yeah, you can chase it as it's pushing down. But as it's pushing down, me personally, I'm not looking to chase it. I want to minimize minimize risk as low as possible. So in this particular scenario, once the market uh, formed this wick here, going below this low, any retracement back up into this candle, which was an old ICT bullish order block, which if you trade below that, it's going to be considered now resistance. It's old support, now newfound resistance. And once we trade back into that, I would have placed my stop loss above here and went short somewhere within this gray box uh, and then targeting the daily levels. But again, that's something that you have to, you know, it takes time to be able to see stuff like that. So again, there's more entries in here, you know, as it's breaking lower, it retraces back up into what ICT bearish order block here, breaking lower, retraces back up into the same ICT bearish order block. If you missed it there, Bam, here, new ICT bearish order block forms, market trades lower. You could sell it here. You could have sold it anywhere within this ICT bearish order block. So you can capitalize on these little moves, right? So there's plenty of opportunity uh, as the market's breaking lower, you know, but you just have to start with a higher time frame to figure out, you know, what direction are you trading? Because by starting with the daily and already knowing that you're in bearish market structure, then I'm automatically looking for sales. I'm not even thinking about a buy. Until I get a market structure break, and in this particular scenario, if this candle here, if we broke above that, that would form a higher high. Uh, any trade, if we made a lower, uh, a higher low, not breaking this low, then that would show to me, that would basically prove to me that we have bullish price action underway, uh, and we could get a potential retracement back up into this level. So, that's what would indicate that to me. But we could also just hold this ICT bearish order block and trade lower uh, at the start of next week. So, you know, these are all things that you have to consider, but this is why I start with the swing that I'm in and then I break down the levels that are within there. So we have this up candle, ICT bearish order block. Okay, the market is trading within that now. If we break above that, then I'm expecting a trade higher potentially into here. So then instead of looking for sells, I would potentially be looking for buys uh, based off what the dollar index was doing at that time, and then look for a buy on a retest of this into this level here. So all that would look like would just be a break above it like that, and then you would just look for the market to trade back within this area and find support. And then I would look for a trade back up into this ICT bearish order block here as my take profit or target. All right, so that's pretty much how I do my higher time frame analysis and how I like build my ideas uh, and the foundation of what I'm gonna be looking for for the week. So if you guys have seen any of uh, my signals, if you're in the paid group or free groups, uh, then I'm sure you've, either taken a signal or at least seen a signal that I called. Uh, and you've also probably seen that I've been using like a new format for uh, my signal. So I'm just gonna show you guys real quick cause it's gonna make sense with uh, what I'm about to tell you in just one second. Okay, here. So if, if I send out a signal, I usually have a couple different take profit levels on there. So. Uh, for this example, it was GBP USD. My entry was a sell between the levels of 35.35 and 35.45. So anywhere within that 10 pips would have been a good sell, targeting 35.15, 34.90, and 34.60. So all that means is take profit one. 
All right, so if you notice, if I entered at 35, then that's 20 pips away, or if I entered at 45, then that's 30 pips away. Once my take profit one was hit, I'm, I'm basically taking 50% of my trade off immediately. And then from there, my stop loss goes to break even. And then once my stop loss is at break even, I have no risk on the trade. So I've already paid myself and I have no risk on the trade. And then if it continues to TP2, take profit two or take profit three, then it's real simple. Then you've just made uh, more money, but it's an added bonus with no risk on the trade. So that's primarily, you know, one of the biggest things that I've learned in my trading is always make sure to pay yourself and always make sure to reduce risk as soon as possible. And you'll notice all of my trade signals, the first take profit will typically be um, 20 to 30 pips away. So with it being 20 to 30 pips away, that is usually my first level or objective that I'm aiming for in order for me to scale a portion of my trade off. So that's it. If I have you know one standard lot on, uh, then all I'm doing is I'm just removing 50% of that standard lot. So if it's 1.0, I'm taking off 50%, which will be 0.5, and then I'll have a remaining 0.5 on and then that will continue for TP2 and TP3. But I've already paid myself from, and I've reduced the risk to zero. I've taken off 50% at 30 pips. So if that's you know half of a standard, that'd be like $150. $150 closed out, and I have no risk on the trade. And if it continues, uh, I'll just make more money because it's, uh, further direction in pips. So that's really how I manage any trade that I'm in. And that that should clear up uh, any confusion for anyone who doesn't understand like my signal format or anything. But it's real simple. Once take profit one gets hit, 50% of the trade is removed. And I'm moving my stop loss to break even. So at that point, I can go to break, I can go to bed, I can do anything. And I, I, I don't have any worry or anything like that or feeling of having to check the markets because I know that I've already paid myself and I have no risk. So, you know, those are key things that you need to do in your trading because most of you probably aren't doing that. You're probably getting in a trade and you're probably sitting in that trade, whether you're, you know, you're probably sitting in the trade until take profit three gets hit. And that just typically take profit three is a swing trade objective. So you need to be you know, considering staying in that for a longer period of time. It's not just going to get hit the same day. Typically take profit one or two will, but those are based off of lower time frames like H1 and H4. But when you're working from a daily, which is usually where my take profit three is, uh, that's going to take a lo longer time to unfold. Uh, so just make sure that you're using partials. Uh, make sure you pay yourself and make sure you are always, always minimizing your risk when you're trading. Um, all right. So real quick before we get into the Q&A, I just want to talk about trust in the trades that you take. And it's real simple, guys. Trust in the trades you take is all based off of your confidence and your skill set, right? So if you're someone who just got into trading and you've only watched a few videos, you don't really know what an ICT bullish or bearish order block is. You don't even know what support and resistance is or whatever the case may be. Or maybe you do know all that stuff, but you just can't figure out what you're looking for in the markets. It's just due to lack of experience, guys. It's just due to lack of time. Okay, so you just have to spend more time in the charts searching for these things. That'll be that'll cause you to be able to see these things before they before they happen. You you could probably look at this and you wouldn't expect you know this this to be an idea. You wouldn't expect this to break and then retest uh, for a potential buy up into this level unless you understand the things that you're looking at. All right, you have to understand that you took out a key daily low over here. Then the market started trading back up. If you trade above this, then you've broken. Uh, resistance level, right? This is an ICT bearish order block. It should hold as resistance. Well, it did here, but now we're pushing back up into it. So what if we break it? Well, if we break it, then a retest should be a logical buy with your stop loss below the bullish order block that'll probably form somewhere right here because the bullish order block is a down move before an up move. 
So that should mean that this down move should be a, a bullish order block on a daily time frame forming. And then you could get in based off of that uh, on a lower time frame. You'll never know those things unless you spend the time and have the confidence from seeing this over and over again, right? So you could see, I see it unfolded here and then it continued, right? But like you have to, you have to go through the charts and you have to see this stuff happen over and over and over again for you to be able to build ideas. And then by you building these ideas, that's how you're going to trade. You're just going to trade based off of your idea. Um, and, and your ideas are all going to come from having a plan for your trading, right? So most of you probably don't have a plan for your trading. I didn't have a plan for my trading until after two years of literally trying to figure this shit out. Right, so a plan is simple. It could be five rules, it could be 10 rules, it could be two rules, it doesn't matter. But you know, mine is pretty simple. It's just stick to a higher time frame. What is my direction? Am I bullish or bearish? If I'm bullish, then I'm looking for buys. If I'm bearish, I'm looking for sells. Okay, so start with a daily time frame. Check the news releases, see what upcoming news release so I can figure out you know, if I should or shouldn't be trading any specific pairs. Right, and then from there, I'm just simply looking for bullish or bearish ICT order blocks, support or resistance. Once it trades into that level, I'm just looking for a break in market structure. Once I get that, I pull my fibs, or I just, you know, look at the market for where I would see my best possible entry, place my stop loss, place my targets, and then that's it. Right, and then you know, also I have you know, take partials at first, take profit, move stop loss to break even. This is all part of my plan, but you guys have to write this down or, you know, put it in a Google doc or whatever you need to do to keep this stuff fresh on your memory. Uh, but you need to remember all these things when you're going in to a trade, any trade that you take demo live, doesn't matter. You should apply these rules for every single one of them because that will give you and allow you to build the discipline you need uh, to become a better trader. So that's the little quick thing that I wanted to talk about, uh, about trusting the trades you take. So uh, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and fire away. I'm ready. So I'm going to grab a sip of water while you guys uh, post any questions, if you have any. All right, so Michael asked, do you start with the daily or go higher to the weekly first? So if it's during the week, I'm typically just monitoring the daily time frame, right? Now, since we are on a weekend right now, excuse me, uh, if we are in the weekend, like right now, then what I, what I normally do is I just, I'll start with a weekly time frame. And I'll just figure out what did last week do. So we could see last week on AUD USD took out key weekly stops here into um, this series of down candles here. Uh, I was going to say this down candle, but it's actually this full series of down candles here uh, because we have three consecutive down candles next to each other. And then this up move here on this candle broke above these three down candles. Uh, classifying this here as a weekly ICT bullish order block. So if we mark that out. All right, so you could see that we've taken out a low that was here, as well as traded into a key weekly support level. All right, so it's possible for us to get a little bit of a weekly a retracement, right, on a weekly time frame. So, you know, with that, then I would build up different ideas for next week. Uh, by marking out just you know the levels that are nearest me. So we got this low that's back over here. That'll be the next downside objective. And upside objective would be this ICT bearish order block. And if we trade up into here, this should be a logical sell, right? Because we've been forming lower lows, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. 
Uh, but if we break above this, then we'll expect price to want to trade higher. But at the start of a new week, I do look at the weekly just to see you know, what unfolded last week and what can I expect going forward for the new week. Uh, but during the week, I'm doing exactly what I just showed you guys on the daily. So as the market closes on Monday, I go look at the charts, look at the daily four hour, one hour, uh, and all that to build up my idea for what I'm looking for going on to the next day. Uh, and that's it. So in terms of a new month or a new week, uh, I just scale it out and I do it that way. So if it's a new week, I do everything you just see me do on a daily, on a weekly. If it's a new month, I do everything you just see me do on a weekly and a daily, on a monthly. All right. So everything uh, can be broken down into a lower time frame. So that's pretty much how I do it, Michael. Um, is it true that London is breakout session and New York is continuation session? So NY is the easiest session to trade since it's all about pullback and entry. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, typically, London session for specific pairs uh, will form the lower high of the day. Like for GBP or Euro, the market will usually make the lower high of the day during London session. Uh, but for pairs like dollar cad it'll typically make the lower high of the day during new york session um but yes by by simply you know from a very basic standpoint you can absolutely if you start watching the market trade through london or through new york and you don't have to do it live you can go back and mark out uh you know the times in your chart so how i would do that is i would just go to a 60 minute time frame let me delete everything i have uh, and then I would just mark out, you know, session times. So uh, London session is between, uh, for me, I'm looking um, 1 to 5 a, oh, wrong, wrong one, 1 to 5 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So, you know, wherever that's at on the chart, I don't feel like going to look for it. Shit, I keep grabbing the wrong one. So wherever that's at on the chart, if that's here, and here and then new york session starts here and ends here then i'll just go in and i'll just like mark a little box around okay so i know this is london and then i know uh this is new york and then i'll just go and i'll delete all the lines and then i'll go and break down the price action right so you know say this is london and london trades up into key resistance and then starts breaking down and then new york just trades back up right into resistance and then you sold during new york session and capitalized on the big move uh absolutely a hundred percent uh you know go study this in your charts because a lot of times yeah this will unfold uh london will be the breakout session and you'll get a continuation during new york session uh, the only thing that i do want to mention that a lot of people do fail to realize with with that strategy uh, is New York session can be a continuation, but also keep in mind, New York session can also be a reversal. Uh, so with that being said, you know, if you're trading into a key higher time frame um, support or resistance level during New York session, just keep in mind that you could get a reversal that unfolds if you're trading into, say, a daily ICT bullish order block, uh, and that happens right at the heart of New York session you could definitely see a reversal from that, right? Because you're gonna have a lot of buy-in that's gonna take place at such a strong support level. Uh, unless the market is super weak, you know, I could trade right through it. But I'm just saying, keep that in your mind uh, when you're trading, especially if you're using that strategy. But it, as long as you're t um, removing 50% of your trade at uh, your first take profit level and reducing risk, you should be, uh, you should be totally fine. I always lose the money I make during the main sessions, during Asia sessions. How do we go about trading Asia or do I just, yeah. So personally, uh, I don't really trade Asia session too much unless I'm trading, uh, AUD USD or USD JPY. So anytime that I do trade those pairs though, uh, if I'm entering an Asia session, it, it's usually with like a smaller position size. Uh, because in London session, we do like to, uh, London session does like to make those stop runs. So we could easily get stopped out uh, during London session uh, by creating a, a short term swing high or swing low during Asia session. 
uh, that could easily be stopped out. So just to explain that to you real quick, uh, what I'm actually saying is, uh, let's say for example that you go, um, say this is Asia session right here. All right, say this little piece of price action is Asia, Asia session. And say you shorted it here, but you placed your stop loss above here during Asia session. Well, say this is London. London pushes up, takes out your stops, and then reverses. Uh, so anytime I am trading Asia session, if I did have my stop loss above here, uh, just keep in mind it would only be like half of my normal position. So if I normally trade one standard, I, I would just use uh, five micros, so um, 0.5, and then I'd be looking for my objective with that and I'd have my stop loss above here. So even if I do get stopped out, it's only 50% uh, of my normal position size. So yeah, I mean, if you're trading like USD JPY or AUD USD, uh, just typically keep a wider stop loss if you're going to trade Asia session, uh, unless you're just looking for like a quick little scalp or something like that to make like 20 pips or so. Uh, you could definitely do that in Asia session, but yeah, I actually struggled with that a bit too uh, at the beginning was I would trade Asia session because it was easier for me to stay up during Asia uh, because where I'm at on the West Coast, it's the middle of the night during the whole time of trading. So if I trade Asia session, I could pretty much trade that and then go to bed. It was just difficult for me to actually see the setup during Asia. I find it a little bit easier for me uh, trading during London or New York. And a lot, a lot higher probability, in my opinion, too. Do you mind giving a brief explanation of how Fibonacci works when it comes to exiting any trade? Uh, yeah, sure. So on, like, on um, for my fibs, I have, uh, like these levels that are set as target levels. So these sometimes are my TP1, TP2, and TP3. Uh, levels, but not always. I usually like to use my uh, target levels if they like align. If, so if this fib level lines up with, uh, like say this high, like which it does, then this would be a level that I would use. But I like to see a few things line up with these levels. I don't just use them automatically as targets. Uh, but I do like, like for example, uh, I would. My take profit three, like if this was a trade that I was taking, this would be my take profit three here, not all the way up here, all right? Just because this is like the most recent swing high. So I would have, you know, if I was buying it, say down here, first take profit here, um, second take profit here, which aligns with 0.27, and then third take profit would be here, which is just a little above negative 62. Uh, that's why I'm saying I don't always use these to measure out my targets, but I do use them if they line up with certain things in the charts, uh, like an old high or old low, which is what I use for my targets. Uh, so just like a, a quick example of that would be, um, let me just find one. Okay. So we're, we're gonna use the one that we were just on. So right here, you have a high, you have a low, market broke above this high, creating a higher high. Uh, and then you have a low, high, higher low, higher high now. So this is you know, bullish price action unfolding. As the market broke out above here, you can pull your FIB. You know, if you're looking for an entry, if you're looking for an entry and you enter based off 38.2, it did trade down into that, but typically I like a trade into 61.8, 70.5, or 79 for a good entry for me. Um, but it did trade into 38.2 and then go higher. So if this was the trade that I was taking, then my targets for this would have been here, here and here, right? These are the FIB targets. Uh, if you could see, they also do align with um, a few of the levels. So negative 27 aligns with this high here, which, which would have been a target. And then you have 
negative 62 here that aligns with this series of up candles before these down candles broke below it, making this an ICT bearish order block. So any trade back up into that should be resistance, uh, which would have been another target level. So that's how I, you know, in a, in a very brief explanation, how I would have set my targets uh, if this was a trade I was taking. So uh, I hope that helps for you, man. Um, whenever you trade, you only open two positions. How do you manage the stop loss for both? Uh, typically, I only open one position. Uh, and then from that one position, I close off portions of it as we, as we reach certain price levels. Um, but if I do take two separate positions, uh, typically my stop loss would be at the same place for both. And then unless one of them was a swing trade and one of them was like a day trade, then my stop losses would have to be different, right? Because I would have, I'd be looking for a day trade probably on a one hour time frame, but a swing trade probably on a daily time frame. Uh, so my stop losses would be relative to the time frame I'm trading off of. So if it's a daily swing trade, then my stop loss would be probably below a daily level, uh, which would typically be bigger than anything on an hourly basis. Uh, so if I do have two positions, which that would be the only case that I usually would, would be if one was a swing trade and one was just uh, an intraday or short-term trade. Uh, but yeah, if they were like two trades on the same pair, uh, you know, for the same setup, then my stop loss and take profits would be the same because it's the same trade. Uh, I actually don't really understand why a lot of people place multiple orders. Um, other than if you're like compounding, right? So if the market's like breaking lower, then you know you add your first position here, breaks lower, add your second position here, breaks lower, add your third position, breaks lower, add your fourth position. I understand that, but people who just like sell three or four positions as it you know hits a certain area, uh, that's stupid to me because it doesn't really make much sense. You're just putting on more risk uh, for no for no reason. Uh, you analyze daily and enter on H1, right? You speak of ICT order blocks. Can you please just go over what is an ICT? Well, ICT is a person. So ICT is the person I learned from, Inner Circle Trader. Uh, he's created concepts in the market uh, to, to trade off of them. So one of those is an ICT bullish order block and a bearish order block. And they're just support or resistance levels in the market. So if you missed the explanation uh, on me going over that, I'll, I'll do it real, real simple here. Uh, an ICT bearish order block is an up candle before a down move. So you have this up candle right here, and then you have this down move that took place after it. Well, it's not confirmed as an ICT bearish order block until a down candle closes below the up candle. So this candle here closes below the up candle, confirming this up candle as an ICT bearish order block. So you can see as the market's like poking in that area, it's finding resistance, right? And it starts to trade lower. Well, a bullish order block is the exact opposite of that. It's a down candle before an up move, right? So it could be one candle or it could be a series of candles. Well, if you look right here, we have two down, candy, two down candles, so a series of down candles right here and then this candle broke above these two down candles confirming this is an ICT bullish order block any trade back up into that should be should hold a support you can see the next day opens trades right into it and then immediately trades away so that's the precision that you get with using ICT order blocks uh, you can see that as soon as it trades into it it trades away. There's no need to try to get in as it's moving up because you need this to confirm as a support level. Any trade to that, you would buy it, stop loss below here. Okay. All right. So that is ICT bullish and bearish order blocks again. Um, for take profit levels, say if we are bullish, our targets are previous highs and our FIB targets correct. Yes. So they're going to be, um, if they line up together, I'll you know, that's what I'll typically I'm just using swing highs or swing lows as my targets, right? So if I'm buying down here, target one is this swing high, target two swing high, target three swing high, target four swing high, right? But if I draw my fib, 
And then my fib also lines up with one or several of these levels with what I was already expecting. Uh, then it's just further confirmation. So 75,297 also lines up with this take profit level, um, which it's a take profit level because there's stops above here. There's people who sold the market here and placed their stop loss above here. So as the market's pushing higher, they're gonna wanna take out anybody who was short here and clear them out. They do that by moving the market above it. Okay, so they do that. You can see as soon as the market goes above it, immediate rejection, and then it continues, right? So, you know, once, look how, you know, you got the confirmation here on an ICT bullish order block for another entry. Look at the expansion that you get right above that. Once it takes it out, immediate rejection. It does continue, but I'm just saying, as soon as it takes out that level, which is a level that lines up with the fibs as well as a swing high, that's usually when I'll use the fib um, take profit levels as well, right? As if it, only if it confirms with another level on the charts, but typically I'm just using swing highs or swing lows as my targets. Suppose you see a good setup on Sunday or Monday, would you still take it or ignore it? I was told by people to only trade Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, so I only trade Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday on my live accounts, uh, but if I do see a setup on Sunday, Monday, I will practice and I'll take it on my demo account. So, I mean, you know, and that's just, that's evidence right there, guys. Like I'm, it's like, this isn't, I'm not brand new to this, but I'm still using the demo account to test things, to learn, to practice all that stuff. Uh, so if I see a trade set up on a Sunday, I'm probably taking it on demo. If I'm taking it on live, it's very, very, very small position size. Uh, definitely, definitely not going to be my normal size. That's for sure. So yeah, if you do trade Sunday or like Mondays are okay to trade, Monday New York session, but don't try to trade Sunday as soon as the market opens. You got to let the market unfold a little bit to give you, give you some evidence of what they're going to do. Uh, but typically for me, I like to stick to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, Sunday has a lot of false moves. And sometimes that'll also roll over into Monday. And that's a lot of times why I just usually wait till Tuesday London session. Uh, and you can usually find a pretty solid trade, especially if you have, you know, Tuesday London session, uh, you know, coupled with like a news release or something. So if we go to Forex factory and we look, yeah, see Tuesday GBP, 1.30 AM, 2 AM Euro GBP, um, all this stuff going on on Tuesday, nothing going on Sunday and Monday. So I'd be looking for my trades you know, next week, I'm going to be looking Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, right? And maybe Friday for USD CAD. Um, but yeah, I mean, typically, I just like to trade Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And if, you know, if you catch 30, 40, 50, 100 pips in those three days, you know, as your account grows, you don't, you don't need any more than that. That's plenty. All right. So if you guys don't have any questions. Uh, I am going to go ahead and wrap up. Uh, hold on. One just came through. How do you go about trading a pair with a red folder? Wait for it news to hit. And then, uh, no, I, so I don't really like factor it in like that. Um, the only time I stay out is if it's like FOMC or NFP. So if it's like the first Friday of the month, it'll be, uh, you know, NFP and I'm not going to look to trade whenever the market's moving around like that because it's just stupid volatile and it's just you're more than likely to lose money yeah if you want to gamble you can go gamble on nfp but for me that's not really my thing i've done it before i lost 700 dollars before i went into work uh and that was a shitty day so i'm not going to trade nfp anymore but you know that's that's up to you guys whether or not that you want to do that but for any normal red folder or any uh, orange folders, it's just used as further confirmation for my trade. So I don't look at this like, oh, if the news comes out negative, then the market's gonna go up or down. Like, I don't look at anything like that. I just look at, okay, I should, if I'm looking for a short in GBP USD, I should get a lot of movement around 1.30 a.m., which means basically I'm gonna make uh, money or you know, I'm, I, I should, the market will either go in my favor, so I'll be up a lot of pips or, uh, it's not going to go in my favor and I'm going to get stopped out and I'll lose a couple pips. 
but I don't factor in news releases like, oh, I'm going to wait for this and then enter or anything like that. Um, the only time I do that is if it's like FOMC, I'll wait till after FOMC. And if there's a trade uh, after FOMC came out, then I'll look to take it. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't ever really trade those days. Yeah, uh, I believe this is recording, uh, so I will post the. I'm gonna post a recording on my YouTube uh, later today as it finishes uploading. Um, and no problem, Michael. Thanks for uh, supporting me, man. I appreciate you participating and also coming out to all these webinars. Uh, so there is one last thing that I wanted to talk about real quick, guys, um, and that is just the. Uh, private group that I have I've been getting a lot of questions on really what is the private group and what does it consist of and all that stuff uh, so just in case you don't know uh, I do have a paid group it is $25 a month it's mainly for the people that don't really understand what they're looking for in the charts uh, and really looking to essentially level up and advance a little bit further in their trading so uh, I created the paid group it is $25 a month yes it's paid uh, the whole reason that I made it a paid group is really for you guys to understand commitment, right? Like it's not $25 isn't paying the bills, right? I'm not looking to make a bunch of money from charging you guys $25. The point of $25 is for you guys to understand that you're paying for something and you're more than not likely not going to let that information go to waste and not use it by you paying for it. So since you're paying for something, you're more than likely to you know, take action. You're going to learn. You're going to participate. You're going to ask questions. Uh, you're going to reach out to me, which also helps me learn. That helps me get better. That helps me practice. That helps me uh, figure out where I need to be taking this for you guys to learn better, all that stuff. So uh, if you're interested in the paid group, then I'll drop the link for that in the chat box uh, right now. And that is $25 a month. It's just a recurring recurring monthly fee and you can cancel anytime if you don't want to do that but it's just a little different from the free group because I do send out uh, you know pretty much every single live trade that I take as well as I do live sessions like this uh, you know trading live as well as uh, private Q&A and market reviews for them uh, on top of that you get you know basically direct access to me 24/7 uh, with whatever you're struggling with in your trading which a lot of people that are teaching out there aren't giving you your time anymore. They're just sending you to a bunch of videos to watch and then letting you do it on your own. Uh, and I understand that, you know, you can watch all the videos that you want, but the thing is, you know, you're not really learning too much from watching. You may learn the concepts from those videos, but you're not really getting the foundation and the material to implement what you've learned uh, unless you actually have someone there giving you their time to help you go through it. So that's pretty much what I'm offering. If you're interested, the link is there in the chat box. And uh, I did see a few other questions that came in, so I'll check those out real quick. Um, do you take into candle patterns or only ICT blocks? Um, candle patterns, no. I don't really like focus on candlestick patterns like uh, engulfing candles or dojis or anything. I know what they are because at the beginning of my trading, I of course came across that stuff like any beginning trader would, but I don't really factor them in. Uh, just everything I've learned from ICT, they really are more used to uh, fake retail and new traders uh, out of the market. So I don't like to focus on things like that. Um, I usually just aim for the ICT blocks. Uh, as well as break in market structure and higher time frame um, bias, whether that be a buy or sell. So, it, I mean, it's real simple, guys. Like, I, I know I'm, like, making it probably seem more simple than it is, but, like, my trading plan and style is really that simple. It's a matter of, you know, looking at the higher time frames, figuring out am I buying or am I selling. And the reason I can tell that is just by are we making lower lows and lower highs or are we making higher highs and higher lows? That'll let me know where we bullish or bearish. From there, I'm either determining whether I'm buying or selling. So it eliminates one whole side of what I'm looking for. If I'm looking for buys and I'm not even thinking about sales, I'm only looking for buys. That means I'm only looking for bullish ICT order blocks. That means I'm only looking for break in market structure to the upside. That means I'm only looking for higher highs and higher lows to form, all that stuff. So 
that is that's what I that's what I use. Um, my day I don't necessarily have like a set daily goal. Um, really, really twenty to thirty pips. If I can make twenty to thirty pips, um, you know, for the day, I'm I'm pretty happy. And it, and for the week, I really want to come out of the week plus thirty pips minimum. Um, so you know, if I catch a hundred pips and then I have by some crazy reason I have a seventy pip loss, which is typically will never happen with me because I get out of the trade way before it even gets close to my stop loss. Um, but forever, for whatever reason, if that did happen, uh, I, I want to end the week with at least 30 pips profit. Um, but typically I look for about 20 to 30 pips a day because I find, I find those setups relatively easy to spot and, uh, execute on. I appreciate you for coming out, Ryan, man, especially all the support, man. Appreciate you showing love. Starting as a full-time trader this week, beyond excited, need ideas for my trading plan and daily goals with pips. Yeah, so uh, go through all my YouTube videos. You know, I have pretty much everything as far as goals and, you know, what my plan is and strategy and all that. But if you're looking for more in-depth stuff, then uh, bite the bullet, man. Just, just do the paid group because you get, it's literally unlimited access to me. I mean, there there's nothing more that I could offer you guys that would be any more valuable than that. So, uh, if you want to work hand in hand, then I'll be more than happy to help, man. Just that would be the way to do that. If you're, you know, someone who wants to kind of get this done and figure it out on your own, maybe you don't have $25 a month, all that, uh, join the free groups, make some money from the free signals, get your money up. Uh, and then you can go that way. Um, currently an IML, but I want to leave and join your group. It seems way better. 165 per month is way too much. 25. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I have a lot of people that I know that are in IML and they do really well, but for me, I, um, I'm not looking to like partner with a company or like sign people up to, uh, you know, to, to educate them on, on, you know, that Forex exists. Uh, I want to actually teach people how to trade and how to use Forex like to make money. And there's plenty of people on IML that do that. But, um, obviously since IML is a bigger brand and, you know, it's a company and everybody wants to get paid, they have to charge more. Um, uh, you know, the benefit that you get whenever you do this on your own and it's your own thing, you call the shots and, you know, if I could, I could charge $5 a month if I wanted to. At that point, though, it would really just be a waste of my time, though, if no one is actually utilizing anything. Uh, so I figured 25 bucks is a good little number for people to, uh, you know, like feel comfortable with because I don't want anybody to feel like a lot of people charge 50 to to $100 for signals. Uh, and that's like more power to them. Like, that's cool. You know, I'm just not looking to like make a bunch of money from charging from signals. Um, more or less just like build a community around like me and like a group of traders who like use my style and have also like learned from me and I've been able to help. Like I'm just really looking to build that. I'm not looking to like grow a, like a, you know, like a, a company's team for them or whatever. Cool. Appreciate that, Michael. Thanks, man. Yeah, uh, that's, I didn't want to like, I didn't want people to feel like I'm like trying to, you know, rip them off or anything. And I also didn't want to seem like I'm trying to be the guy who's offering all the free stuff and then suddenly wants to charge like for paid stuff. It's just people were reaching out to me saying like, how can I learn what you actually do and how you do it? So I'm just like, well, I'll show you. Uh, but I also need you to be committed. So this is kind of my commitment breaker, I guess. Uh, whether you're going to, if you're going to pay the money, then you're committed. If you're not willing to pay the money, then I don't think you're really committed to succeed. Appreciate you guys. Uh, yeah, so that's it for today's webinar. Um, I just wanted to keep it pretty much right at an hour. So we have done that right to the minute. It's also sickening how much they push you to recruit people. Yeah, man. Uh, 
I mean, it is what it is, you know, it's network marketing, it's MLM. That's, that's what the business is. I was in several different network marketing companies. That's actually like where my entrepreneurship journey started, but it's, I mean, that's not something for me. Uh, and I personally don't think that, um, you know, that people should be building teams around, uh, you know, a product or service that, you know, a lot of them don't understand yet. You have new people that join IML and they don't know anything about trading, but they're trying to recruit, recruit people to, uh, to, to learn about trading. And, and, you know, these people are, are basically giving um, ideas and, and just like all these like dreams to people that they could do all this stuff with Forex and by all means you can, but you don't get there by just telling a bunch of people about Forex. You have to actually learn how to trade. Cool. Yeah. So uh, yeah, for anybody that joins um, you will receive an email from me and that email will basically have all the links to join the private groups. So I'll show you real quick. Uh, basically all the private groups, we have two private groups, um, which they are here. We have private signals, and this is basically where I just send out uh, the signals, little voice messages of tips, um, different like little you know trade ideas and stuff like that that I'm looking at. So that is the signal group and I'm the only one that can post in there. Nobody can respond or anything in there. So this is just strictly for signals uh, for you guys to be notified. And then I also have a chat that I created uh, where you guys can just like communicate back and forth to me and, you know, send pictures, share, share screenshots of your charts, all that stuff. And then I can just help you with that. Um, so that's pretty much that for uh, what you get access to. Uh, you get both of those and then we have a private Facebook group as well. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Take it easy, Michael. I'm about to hop off too, brother. All right. So unless anyone else has any more questions, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hop off. And again, anyone who uh, signs up, I'll send you an email pretty much right after you sign up because I do get the notifications to my phone. Uh, and then I will send you over the links and then it's a done deal. Yes, this will be on YouTube uh, as soon as it finishes um, rendering from the recording. I will upload it to YouTube. Yep, no worries, guys. Have a good one. Appreciate you guys for coming out.